Okay. Ten. Oh shit, I had us go live. But that's okay. We can do our 10 seconds of silence now. Okay. That's 10 seconds. Okie dokie. We're live. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story, once a week. I'm Gerald. I'm Anise. I'm Remy. And I'm Maya. Before we get started, there may be a, some language, some difficulty with language because we are potty mouth bad people. And so if you have children, definitely check iTunes for the show rating or check the website. We do list when our show is explicit and when it's not. So, let's get started. If you haven't read Housebreaking by Sarah Frisch and don't want to be spoiled, pause the podcast, read the story, and then come back. The story begins with the main character, Seamus, doing things that are unlike him. He's not a drinker, but he drinks several beers. He's depressed, but he strikes a, a conversation with a complete stranger and eventually asks her to stay the night. On the flip side, his house is a mess and he's a stranger as well, but Charity agrees to stay with him. Another part of the story concerns a trip he made in the recent past to Pakistan to record instances of civilian deaths from US drone attacks, where he accompanies an older woman, Melinda. We feel Seamus' anxiety in an environment which is, in which he's totally alien. Back in the present, Charity is being harassed by her ex-boyfriend, and she and Seamus drive over there to resolve the issue. So, oh. top level, how did everybody like this story? Uh, I'll go first, since it was my story. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I liked it. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it. It was the longest story. It's, it's about 12,000 words, so it's, it's quite a long, short story. But um, uh, it, it was a, an interesting narrative. Um, I enjoyed the characters, so thumbs up from me. Um, Anise. Uh, okay, so this story, it was a little weird for me reading it because the theme she's exploring, the message that I'm getting from it is all stuff that I like, and I can tell I'm aligned with the author politically, but the narrative itself is something I struggled to get into, and I had a lot of moments where I was just sort of like, I don't know why this is happening this way. So I feel like I need you guys to help me connect the narrative, which I struggled with, to the message, which I liked. Well, I don't think I'm going to be much of a help, Annie's, because for the first half of the story, it seduced me, and I felt like this was amazing writing. It was melodical, and it, it, I was really enjoying it. It was going much faster than its allotted words. It may be a 12,000-word story, but it really does not feel like it's a 12,000-word story. But towards, mm, I would say about two-thirds, um, I started getting annoyed, and it was like this gut, like, I really don't want to be reading this. I had to almost force myself to keep reading, um, but it wasn't because of anything that was being said. It wasn't because of the characters, because I love the characters, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was that was bothering me, and I think it was because the political me message felt so just over my head. It felt like it was just being banged into me, and it was annoying me. How about you, Remy? I liked it. I liked it a lot. I felt like it was very well written. I I liked the political like slant that it took. Um, I mean, not, the message aside, I just I'm into like politics, so I could like relate to the things that were said. Um, yeah, I just felt like this is how a story should be. It was a nice story. Wow, Rami liked it. He doesn't like anything. I feel like one of those old commercials from the '80s. I should have like a bowl of cereal in front of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so where do we want to start with this? You know, it sounds like Annie's is on the fence. You both of you guys like the story, which I th think is interesting. And I think I probably had the most trouble with it, but I didn't dislike it. It was just this vague sense of give me some room to be thinking for myself. Yeah, well, I, I, I yeah. I was just going to ask because we've all touched upon, except for I think Gerald, we touched upon like the message. But we're all saying the message is if we've all agreed on what it is, but we may not because there's many things to glean from it. So I'm curious yeah. what thinks the main message is. You want to do that now or do you want to wait until we get into symb symb symbolism and crap? 
I feel like we need to get on the same page because there's so many messages. Like I, there really is. Yeah. Um, the political message was just annoying. But what I found interesting was the religious message. Um, first, Christian Zionists isn't a religion that's commonly talked about. Everyone sees the little like shops on the corner, but I I can't tell you. I I don't think I've ever actually met a Christian Zionist. I couldn't tell you what their belief system is. And um, I found it very interesting that um, that it that the author chose that particular religion to have to have him be struggling with because it is something that's kind of a blank slate for me. So it removed some of my preconceived notions. It made me more open to the story um, in a way that I really enjoyed. As far as what it meant, like there was this whole struggle of. You know, for me as a Buddhist, like, his experience of looking at the world and just feeling so just broken by it and trying to grasp at life through love was something that I definitely, like, felt some sort of kinship with. And, and I enjoyed seeing that on paper. You know, that for me was, was really an important message. Yeah, I, 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 like like Rami, I, I enjoyed the the overt political messages, um, and like him. Down I, with I enjoyed... Halliburton? Is that what you're saying, Gerald? <laughs> I'm not saying anything like that. We never know who's listening to this. Oh, is that a Delaware House? I'm sorry. <laughs> Grand strikes over the UK. <laughs> but, uh, oh God, so... don't say such a thing. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's actually unusual to 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 have such a, a sort of, we, I don't know what, we, what you'd call it, a sort of libertarian, liberal, um, conscious message in a story like this. So, so I, I, I enjoyed the, the, the sort of top-level narrative for that reason. Um, but is it really that unusual? You know, I think a lot of authors have very liberal messages. I think they're just, they're more subtle about it. Like, I appreciate the liberal message. That's, I just would have appreciated more subtlety. That's what I mean. I, I, I say it's unusual to have it as overt and as yeah. as, as clear as, as that. So, it's, when, I'm, I think... when I was talking about the political message, I it, to me, the political um, references that she made, at no point did I feel like, the story was trying to get me to agree. It was written in a way where it's like assuming its audience already does. And the message that I um, that I took from it was this: a lot of the characters they see the sort of like social ills, geopolitical, social horrors, and even though they're repulsed by them, they still need to accept them in pieces in order to survive. So Charity works in public relations for a company that ethically she doesn't agree with. Melinda accepts is a very strong feminist, but she accepts this passive role to survive her tour in Pakistan. Greg, who's like hating the capitalists, is a Verizon store manager. So there's this interesting play in like, this stuff is so oppressive that even if you see it for what it is and you don't like it, you still need to accept it just to make it. Which but they're not making it. They're all being destroyed. Yeah, they are being destroyed, and 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 the destruction is emotional and literal, like physically, their their homes, their shelter, their bodies are being hurt by it. Yeah. I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting for Rami to say something. Yeah, I'm waiting for Rami's message. No, I I think um. Part of the reason maybe for the overt political tone was the setting of the story being around Washington, D.C., which is the political capital and the literal capital of the country. Um, and, yeah, I guess, like, and the nature of both their works having to do with, like, the whole military-industrial complex. And so, well, I, mean, I, I guess, and I guess... I was interested in tackling like uh, the issues that you said you had. Like, what kinds of dots did you fail to connect? I. So it's funny. Maya said she liked the characters. There isn't a single character I liked except Melinda, maybe. And I was amused by Greg, but I didn't like him. I didn't like Charity or care about her story. And 
I know I'm supposed to be irritated by Sheamus in places, but I'm also supposed to be sympathetic in other places, and I never was. I just, you know, I was just kind of like, he's kind of pathetic and a little gross. Um, a lot of gross in some, pla in some places. But um, not that that means he didn't ring true for me. He did ring true. I just never really wanted to like, champion his cause, I guess. And some of the political references... Mainly the very first one is one that I very viscerally jumped back from. So the first one where she talks about the woman who was gang raped by her coworkers and yeah. shipping, that's referencing a real thing. It's referencing the mm -hmm. Jay Jones thing, except by the time the story came out, she, that had actually gone to trial and she lost. So it's a really weird thing to like start this short story on. I didn't know what to make of that and I was just kind of like, oh, that's that's not... Yeah, it's just weird. I'm like, that's not the best place to like champion a sort of liberal agenda. And I guess there is ambiguity throughout the story, but it comes back a second time in a joke, and it's like, okay, but you guys know that that story is very controversial. It didn't play out the way that it was or originally said. She lost a trial. There was, yeah. I was just like, that's a weird one. Yeah, see, that didn't bother me at all because, like you said, there's so much ambiguity throughout the story. Um, I, I think, for me, I, you know, when, when, I think what I struggled most with, you know, I like the characters, but that said, I didn't like the characters. I liked how well they were written. I liked how honest they were. I liked how real they felt. They weren't people I would want to sit down and have coffee with. Um, ex exactly. And so I did enjoy the character. I felt like the characters were very, very well written, and I was very involved in the story. I definitely had, I wanted to champion Seamus. I wanted him to be able to get out of this hole he was in, you know, and, and in that respect, I was different from you, Annie's. Um, but there was, that no, there was no one to really saddle up super close with to ride me through the story. And, and I'm thinking maybe that might have been part of my issue because without someone to ride along with closely, the political messages were just so just blatant that they were almost gross. They were almost just too just obscene for so much nuance in a story. I wanted more nuance in the message. And, um, and it bugged me. Like I found that the political message was the least interesting part of the story. The part of the story that really drug me in the closest was Seamus' struggle with his spiritual life, with, with, with reconciling what he sees in the everyday world and what he was taught and what he really, truly wants to believe. And that whole issue to me was far more interesting than this whole issue of the world being a not great place and it tearing people into shreds. Like that to me was uninteresting. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> I, I thought that was probably there are definitely several. Uh, yeah, I think there are definitely several overlapping um, or layers of themes here, and I think um, part of the world, you know, not being a great place, like it has to do both with religious and political beliefs. Um, and I, I agree with what you said, uh, Maya, that, you know, the story did feel real. And I think it's a reflection of life, you know, and I think uh, during the course of the story, there are several mentions of the word, word gray to describe things because like it is gray, nothing's clear cut. Um, even, you know, now, you know, thinking back to the example of the rape case, maybe that was chosen on purpose because it's another right. example of things not being completely one side or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, I think it's important to distinguish between um, like how much you like the characters described versus like how like honest and, and real of a portrayal it seemed because yeah, I, I, I didn't wouldn't like associate myself with them necessarily, but I still felt like it was a genuine description of people's lives and the struggles that they deal with. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I think it's there's it, it's it's a whole sort of it's an analog story for me. So the grayness, the the lack of clarity, the characters who are ambiguous, the um, you know, charity, especially in her job, um, it 
it it just sort of struck me that this is how life is. It's a, it's a, through these characters she's portraying how life is. We have to make difficult decisions, and sometimes we have things which which don't fit in well with our moral compass, but it just has to be done. So I, I, I for me, I that that's why it sort of rang true, and that's why I, I, you know I enjoyed it so much. I think. I struggled to believe that Charity would stay that long with Seamus. Like that, I think that was one of the things that I just, I was like, really? There's so, I really struggled. I could see like a one-off, a rebellious act, a one night, a week at most, but like she's there for months at one point. I'm like, really? It, I, I, that I couldn't, for some reason, reconcile. Well, I have, have no to... problem with that, given how long she stayed with Greg. She seems like one of those women that just stays. She's a stayer, and she's not going to move on until she has some place to move on to. You know those girls. They're in a bad relationship, but they stay until they have the next boyfriend on the, on the shelf. You know, and then they go to that one. They're like, never live alone, because they're always afraid to be alone. Yeah, like, I've seen true. women like that. Yeah, no, those women exist, but I feel like they have a type. Like, I couldn't believe, like, Seamus would be one of them. I mean, I think at the end of the story, she leaves him, though. I think she goes back to Greg. That's my story behind the story. That, 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 that's your story behind the story? That, that's your mo mom's interpretation? Did you two have like a little tete as you decided what happened at the end of the story? Yeah. <laughs> Which reminds me, did anybody else have problems at the end of the story? I gotta say, um, I read the first two-thirds of the story probably in 20 minutes, half an hour, like it was a quick read. It took me two days to finish the story. Like literally I was finishing the last paragraph as we were like getting set up this morning. I really struggled to get through the ending of the story and I don't know why. It just totally lost me, and I found it so uninteresting, and it was just like drudgery. The ending, I could not stand the end. <laughs> no, I, 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 I had problems with the ending, um, not because I couldn't read it, because it, it was for me, it was, it was, it was legible and and understandable. Again, at the, the sort of top level, um, so it was a part of the story, and it, and it went, it fitted quite well. But I didn't. I couldn't sort of work out in my mind where where the ending was, and again, this is this is the ambiguity. Mm -hmm. of what happens? She doesn't tell us. She doesn't overtly say, you know, and they all lived happily ever after, which obviously they didn't. But um, they they all, you know, it just it was just left hanging for us to decide what the ending was. Yeah, yeah. I just kept losing interest. My mind would wander. I'm like, oh, squirrel. <laughs> and, and that was a moment where. Up until the end, I believed, even if I didn't like Seamus, and I was like, I wanted to rattle him, but I believed him. But I didn't believe he would break into a house. Like, I'm like, this guy, he's... No, no, passive. he wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just like, it almost felt like, I mean, maybe because he's, like, worshipping this girl and, like, doing everything she says. But, yeah, I didn't think he'd do that. I didn't think he would break into a house. No, no, it wasn't within his character. E even if Even if he was following her, I didn't see it either. I could Can see I him just... standing sentry outside, you know. Be like, yeah, exactly. Afraid, like, be careful. Right. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, it struck me he was surprisingly docile for a large man. You know, I've known a lot of large men that were surprisingly docile, actually. <laughs> it's always the little ones. They're like dogs, you know, like chihuahuas. They're the ones that go after you. It's pit never bulls. the pit bull. The pit bull's like, oh, hi, pet me. <laughs> the Napoleon complex, isn't it? Sorry, I just compared men to dogs. I apologize to both of you. <laughs> You're not the first or last to do that. It's all good. <laughs> but it was in a good way. I like dogs. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they stay in their place, eh? Ouch! <laughs> also, for me, he wasn't he wasn't just in my mind just like a big guy. He was like obese in my mind because really? um, there's that line where Melinda's cramped in her airplane seat, and that's kind of a dog whistle sometimes for like when people talk about kind of shame, like when they're like fat shaming people who need like the double seat belt thing or whatever. Like that's that's what it evoked in my mind. That reference. maybe that's yeah, why you I, had so many problems with Charity Stanton because I didn't see him as obese. I just saw him as a big guy. Exactly. And big guys yeah. take up a lot of room. Yeah, like, I've known some guys fat. that were like six five, six seven. They're big, right. <laughs> and they're not necessarily fat. Because <laughs> I think that would make a big difference. I think if I was picturing him as slovenly, it would have been harder. Because I don't see Ch Charity as being attracted to him, but I could see her being attracted to some six foot five, fairly big, strong, strapping guy who's a little depressed like that. I could see. 
Yeah, I and, didn't and, see Strap Man. I saw. I definitely saw him as slovenly. Like I always pictured him in like gray sweatpants that are stained. <laughs> Can we say how cute it was that when Charity comes back, like he is totally ran around the house trying to pick everything up. Like I pictured him in my head, like shoving shit in the closet, like trying to like push stuff under the jacket to make the place presentable. Like every single person does on the planet. Oh God, she's coming over and she's gonna get naked in my house. My house is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, like I mean, so I, I so because because he did he watered the plants in his PJs at one point, and you know sometimes when when he when she was living there and she went after work and he went back to bed all day and 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 yeah, he's a bit of a slob. Um, <laughs> and, and there was lots of descriptions more than necessary about like chicken fat on his fingers and oil and just like takeout boxes piled high. <laughs> See, to me, that's just depressed single dude. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've been in enough depressed single dude bachelor pads that they ain't cooking, they're not moving, they may not be fat, they and may be fat, but they're just going to lay there. Mm. Play video games, masturbate, watch porn, that's it. <laughs> there goes our rating. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's what y'all do when you're all sad. <laughs> <laughs> But I, so until he stated his height, I was still keeping it open like he could be obese or just very large. But then he said his height, and I said, oh, yeah, he's just like a very big guy. Mm. Yeah. That's so funny. It's, it's, it's just going to be one of these podcasts where there's big gaps. <laughs> I don't what to say. Yeah. It's, it's like, what do we say about this story? Okay. Was there anything about the story that you guys really didn't like? It sounds like both the guys liked it fairly oh. well, oh. which I actually find interesting that you guys are agreeing, because I don't think you two have actually agreed yet, have you? I, I Usually you two are on opposite. Mm. So, Annie's, where did you have issues? I've already stated my issues with the last third of the story, just losing my attention. We both like the black box, the espionage. We're both into spies and stuff. Oh yes, you both like like black box, but you you just liked it because it was very James Bond. <laughs> and you guys are dudes. It's like yeah, it's, it's, there's there's moms and pretty girls. Of course we're gonna like it. <laughs> no intellectual depth there. Drones and missiles and stuff like that. So what's not to like? Oh, look how happy Gerald gets just remembering it. <laughs> I'm so shallow. <laughs> That's why we like you. So, Eddie. <laughs> oh, don't deny yeah, that I'm think, shallow, will you? I think I've pretty much said what I don't like. It, I, I, it's a pretty damning. It's, like, it seems know. like the things that we both picked out that we didn't like, there weren't very many, but the one thing that bothered us was really bothersome. Yeah, it's just weird. It's like, it's just a story that I want to like because I can tell I'd probably like the author if we went out because, you know, we could talk politics and be like, oh, yeah, and just, you know, be like totally. an echo board. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and also, I like the message. I liked what I gleaned from it, that idea of you still need to kind of toe around these lines to try to survive even if you don't survive well because this is just so And that was bigger. a message that went over my head and I like that message too. I totally feel you. Yeah. But at the same, it's almost like I wish these the same message and these same themes were explored with different characters in a different story. I just don't like these characters. I don't care about them. And then the plot, the interesting part was the Pakistan part of it. But you know, we've seen that story in so many other different, especially different TV shows and stuff, where it's like the thing that needs to be different for me for this to work is the story of now, the the romantic arc, and that's the one where I'm just like, mm, I didn't, I couldn't get into it. I, mainly because I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that Charity would care. Actually, for a while, I didn't think she was even being honest about her job until she actually wrote a check. But I thought she was lying about having a job for a while because she's yeah. a character you can't really trust or believe. Or it was um, a different job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A different job, in air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even need to do the air quotes because I heard them. <laughs> it was a very different job. <laughs> You're pretty good on picking up these little nuances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been around. Um, so, <laughs> Rammy, stop it.
it. I'm rubbing it off. Stop being bad. Okay, so I think for me, um, the main I like I like the story being explored with these characters. I felt like the overtness of the political message actually took away from it. I would have liked the Pakistan story maybe shrunk, maybe have a little bit more nuance, maybe a little bit more mystery about what went on. And I I would have enjoyed seeing him struggle with his Pakistan experience through the eye through more of his current eyes as he's struggling through his religion. I would have enjoyed it from that perspective. And it was a big enough flaw that it that it didn't bother me for the first two thirds of the story, but by the end I was worn out. I don't think the end of the story was bad. I think I was just exhausted by the end of it. And and I don't know perhaps the story was just too long. Mm. Yeah, you know, so. now I'm starting to wonder, maybe the story was just too long because really there wasn't anything in particular that was wrong with the last third. I just found myself really struggling to get through it and just feeling distracted and uninterested in the last third. And so maybe by then I was just worn out from all of the political hand wringing. It's it's quite interesting that you say that because uh, I I found um, an interview with her and she wrote the beginning like years and years ago a long time ago and couldn't find um, the rest of the story to to fit it. Um, oh. And then then she wrote it and it was like twenty odd thousand words. So she thought, mm, this is a bit too long. So she cut it down, and I think down to 17, and then, then you know, chopped a bit out and, and, and rearranged it, and then brought it down to 12. So may, maybe it's it's a bigger story. And Yeah, because I can see this either as a smaller story or a bigger story. If mm. she had kept it novella length, yeah. and allowed us to have get deeper into their minds and their characters, I think I would have enjoyed it just as better just as much as I would have if it was shorter. That is really interesting. Mm. I, you know, I think I would really like to, I'm like Annie Ease. I want to like the story and I think I would really like to hang out with this author. This seems like an author that I could sit down with, have a couple drinks, talk about writing, talk about politics, but the story just didn't hook me. I think this was probably, and the, and the other thing that bothers me is I love the writing. Can we talk about the writing? There was a musicality in the voice in this book story, I also almost called it a book, that made me keep wanting to like it, even though I wasn't liking it. Like, it was beautifully written. Yeah. You know, um, there were certain points I was like, wow, that's beautiful. I would say probably by the end of the first page, I was just like, you know, there, were, there was something very simple and kind of melodic about it that just I really appreciated and enjoyed I, I love the voice yeah it was very well written and, and something else I really liked regarding the Pakistan um, description was the remarkable attention of the detail um, that was given to, to some of the cultural uh, mm -hmm. nuances I guess and it, it seemed like very accurate to me it wasn't glossed over and it wasn't stereotyped and that I appreciate because it's really easy to gloss over things and end up stereotyping things because you're not paying attention to details. It's funny. I, I don't think I noticed the writing too much, which is a good thing. You don't, you don't want to notice the writing. That's a story that's flowing really well. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I walked away from it saying, oh, it was so lyrical and melodic. I thought it was really uh, effective. You know, like, is the best way to put it. It, it, it got me from A to B because at no point was I like, when is the story over? Let me look at the scroll bar. That wasn't my issue with it. I could I could get through it really fluidly. So she was really efficient in that way. The only the only thing that I sometimes was like was I sometimes resisted the dialogue. Like I didn't believe like there was especially early on there was some stuff that Charity said to Shima. So I was like I feel like when you're that type of character and you're meeting this guy who describes himself as a Christian scientist, I feel like people are cagier before they like bust out these really heavy-handed political beliefs, right? Like, I feel like you do that when you know you're with someone who you're like, oh, you went to a small liberal arts college, of course, I can just say this and you'll accept it. But with someone like Shemus, I felt like it was weird to me. There were certain dialogues. Really? Things. Because yeah, Christian they're... scientists are very liberal. See, I saw that... At... Him saying that to me gave her permission 
I, she would be know. more open. Yeah, I don't know. I they're feel... not like. Yeah. They're almost like Unitarians in that respect. You know, you're never gonna find a Republican version. Of yeah, I guess I just had to put it with the dialogue. It, it was like I totally believe this character would say this, just not to this audience. A few times that happened to me, or like sometimes Greg. Yeah, or like Greg would say stuff to Seamus sometimes, or so, it was certain things where I was like, it's weird you're saying this now into this person. Not that you are saying it, just that this is the moment. That I was yeah. just yeah. That's interesting. You know, the writing, it wasn't lyrical writing. I, I think what I found beautiful was there was a simplicity and delicacy in the writing that I just loved. But it definitely wasn't lyrical. You know, there wasn't a lot of big French-based words floating around or anything. <laughs> I'm not so lyrical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're getting into Germanic and Latin at roots. You know, <laughs> it's like there was there was a lot more Germanic than there was Latin going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was um, yeah the the that's part of why I, I liked it so much is because I the writing was so easy, so flowing, um, so natural all the way through the whole. I, I didn't think that there was a change in um, in the style or in how it was written. It was it was it, it just it just flowed all the way through, and I, I had to stop and think and wonder the first time I read it because it it was just a story, and, and I enjoyed it for all that. And then reading it again, you start to pick up some of the 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 subtler aspects, there's not many, I, I, I will admit, there's, um, it's a fairly straightforward story, maybe I'm missing things. I'm, I'm just looking at some of the lines that I underlined. <clears throat> One of the ones that I really liked was his mother's quote, stand porter at the door of thought. I love that line. I there was something, it's an old expression, like I've never heard that expression, and I've heard a lot of old expressions, because my mom was old, <clears throat> and it just sounds like there's something about that I really liked, I liked how Charity described her mother's death, you know, my mom shot herself in a, jump, in a dumpster, Charity said, out back of the restaurant she managed, I think she was trying to be considerate, not wanting us, to, not wanting to leave us a mess, that just... That was just so brutally honest and sad. <laughs> yeah, you, you see, there's, there's, there's some, some great bits in the story. I mean, one of the bits highlighted was when he was in Pakistan, and uh, he said a small group of kids gathered at his steep, uh, the, a small group of kids gathered at his knees to stare at the machine, scattering when he moved and reconfiguring like minnows, low, like minnows at low tide. I thought, what a great line. I, yeah, I really yeah, that, that was a good one. That was a good one. I could just see them coming in and then going out like little minnows. Yeah, <laughs> that was really good. So, so that that's so from that, I I sort of deduced that that she makes it easy to read, but the language is, is full, she includes, so, so she's a good writer, she's a good writer, so I then start to think that what she's doing, she's doing deliberately, she's not just omitting subtleness and layers and, and things like that, but she's actually telling us, you know, and, and, and sort of presenting what our world is back to us and saying, look, here, here are my characters and they're full of conflictions and, and contradictions and this is what we all are. Which makes me wonder, because we've said this comment before where we've read a story that may have had some issues, but we knew they were good writers, so we gave the writer a little bit more room to explore, and we trusted them. And in this case, I was able to trust her for the first two-thirds of the story, but when do you think the it's a good writer... I'm going to give them some leeway, wears off. Like, to me, the story really needed to be shorter, or now that I found out it was longer, it needed to stay longer. It was either a much shorter story or a novella. It was a weird length for a story, and it bothered me, and I, I think I've run up against my limit as far as, this is a good writer, I'm going to trust her just a little bit more. 
Yeah, just just going going back to what I, I said earlier, I, I found the the interview now, and, and uh, she says that the story was probably seven thousand words, which is about average, until she 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 committed to doing the part of it in Pakistan. She said then it ballooned to almost twenty five thousand words. I would so I really to like to learn. read the original story before she inserted all of the stuff from Pakistan. Yeah, I would that, just love to read her first draft because I have a feeling I would enjoy that story better. Like, given how much I enjoyed the emotional and spiritual conflict to Seamus, I bet you I'd enjoy her original story even more. And and she actually says, now that you mention it, I can see how the pacing is a bit more novelistic than in shorter stories. So, so mm -hmm. she now recognizing. Not that she did it deliberately, but she she's recognizing that what she's produced is is a sort of peculiar short story that doesn't seem like a short story. Yeah, it really doesn't. I actually I accidentally called it a book. Um, it mm. kind of reminds me of the Alice Munro story we read, although that one felt more like a short story. But that even that one, it felt novelistic. It felt like a really really tiny novel. And mm. this one feels like a truncated novel or an abridged novel to me. Um, it makes me wonder what really is the difference between a novel and a short story. Because I, I in my naivety, I always pictured short stories as just small novels. But I'm thinking they're very different. Because if I'm reading a short story and I'm thinking this doesn't feel like a short story, it feels like a novel, that tells me that there's a, di a core difference in the structure of them. Yeah, that, I think there's a, there's a difference between a short story and a short novel, and they can both have the same number of words, but but the structure mm -hmm. of them is is quite different. Sorry, Randy, I keep talking over you. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, even though Gerald um, said that she, originally it was longer, I wasn't really bothered by it because I, when reading, I didn't feel like there was necessarily anything missing. Um, I actually like the segues into the flashbacks about Pakistan because I think it kind of broke things up a bit and I think if it was just a continual description of you know his life in the present I think I would have gotten eventually a little bored by it so it was like a nice shift into you know a war zone conflict it kept it interesting for me at least yeah you seem like her ideal reader <laughs> no really there's this concept in author circles of picturing your ideal reader and you're politically minded, but you're very nuanced, and you appreciate the intellectual and emotional um, like depth in the characters. And I, I think that you probably are her art, ideal reader, at least for this story. Okay. Glad to be it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the Alice Munro story because you're right, that one feels more like a short story, and yet I feel like when I think of what's the major difference between these stories, yeah, place, setting, plot, everything, but also just the Alice Munro story, those characters, like, it's just so, like, those characters are just so um, fleshed out. I mean, it's Munro, it's a little ridiculous to be like, you know, obviously. But there was, but also, she was able to pull off characters that I didn't like, but still liked, <laughs> you know, if that makes sense? Like, appreciate yeah. yeah. yeah character that she crafted that I completely believe that like I've seen this before but didn't empathize with where in this one it's like I believe them but there's still this there's just something I wonder if it's the dialogue thing I wonder if that's what for me kind of made me push back a bit like just like I don't why are people saying these things right now or maybe I'm like etiquette police policing them one them. second this is an emergency Ariel My my headset's running out of battery. I need to get my other microphone, my other headset. Okay. Stop. This will be cut out. It's my Ariel, I need the headset yeah. now. Um, I'm maybe recording I'm just it. My headset's falling apart. My headset's running out of battery. Political beliefs that I won't say <laughs> in certain companies. So I'm just like, why are you saying it? Sorry, I just figured it would be better to um, grab it now than yeah, yeah. have my battery finish dying as we're like in the middle of the ending of the podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can never tell if I've got 15 minutes left or two. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Can you hurry? I'm, I'm on air. Hurry. Like, can you I... be any slower? 
Like, could. <laughs> it would be easy. Yeah. Go to hell. You just crawl. Just get in the shower where you belong. Yeah. Actually, the bonus after the closing jingle. Could you finish the floor? Well, I could. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, teenage boys. He's a riot. <laughs> One but, second. Um, back to. Right. There we go. Yeah. On Anna Yusa's point about the dialogue, I did agree. I did feel like s some of the things were a bit awkward and things that normal people wouldn't say, but ultimately I attributed it back to their own character. Like there are tons of people in the world who would say things that I would think is off-putting or, or not normal, but I mean, it's just like a, when I think, okay, this is like the character of this person, like Greg, like the second question he asks Seamus is, how tall are you? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So it's like, can I take you? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> like, I thought that he was getting ready to fight. <laughs> Because he's, he's very diminutive, isn't he, Greg? He, yeah, I didn't picture him as a very big man. Well, no. actually, I think he might even be a lot because he's, he, I think he only comes up to, to like, wing <laughs> height in the car. He so. describes his hands like paws. <laughs> Are we all picturing this tiny, kind of hippie-ish, vegan, five-foot... Six, dude. <laughs> no, I think he's shorter than that. Because you think he's he like says, five two? Just little, little man. <laughs> he says she didn't tell you, did she? No. Don't cheer all. You're so bad. Life. That's what. He didn't yeah. Talk about being I married, so not small. about being short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I apologies to all of the smaller in stature men on the podcast yeah, that might yeah, be our yeah. listeners. I have yeah. dated many a smaller stature yeah, men. Yeah, and yeah. Gerald, yeah. this is all on Gerald. <laughs> Redemption by Maya's dating history. It's yes. cool, guys. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's the equivalent of saying, like, I have a lot of black friends. <laughs> I'm still thinking that. <laughs> Fantastic. I was literally just yeah. thinking that, Remy. Oh, God, I've got oh, tears. So awesome. <laughs> because yeah, she says, she says, hey, somebody said near his left ear, and he found a face a few inches from his own. So he's sitting in the car, and there's this guy at the same height as him. No, but he was, he was leaning on the door, I think. Oh, God. I think he was like, oh, God. Right. It's, it's painful. painful. Yeah, he's forward. <laughs> We're gonna give him the benefit. <laughs> sorry, there goes my audio, Annie. So I'm sorry. I tried not to. Be, I tried so hard. <laughs> hard silence. Nope. <laughs> it's just gonna be peak. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. This podcast, this podcast is like the story. It's full of conflict. Full of. <laughs> Gray, it's it's funny. And Possibly. the last third is just yeah, it's all downhill. <laughs> oh, round of applause. Well but um, um, <laughs> where's it's that symbol? I need I need like audio, like <laughs> I can push a button and have it be all like boom, boom, because that was great. <laughs> oh god, we're a mess. So are we ready to rate this thing? I think we are. I think so. Okay. You guys go first because I'm still torn. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, Alright, I guess I'll. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll give it a solid six. Oh, whoa! What? Yeah. Wow. Really? Already? Oh, yeah. Yep. I, I, me too. I, I was I was trying to think of, of a reason for not giving it a six and. and really? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm giving it a four. It was like right in the middle for me. Hmm. Not horrible, not great for me. How about you, Annie's? I guess a three point five, a three. Or okay, 3. now 5. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you, can take, you can take the hit there because now I don't feel yeah. so bad. Because I'm like, I feel bad. I kept wanting to give it more than a four, and I can't find a reason to give it more than a four. And I'm scared I might hurt the author's feelings because I like the author. I can tell I like this writing. But the story just didn't work for me. 
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, exactly. I think it's actually a three for me if I'm judging it like personally and the way that I tend to judge stories where it's just like there were. I think there was just too many things as I read it that I was resisting. And like I said, I like the message. I wish it was just a different story to get me there. But that's just, you know, me personally. We got two sixes, so I don't feel so bad, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I thought you would go higher than me. That that really surprises me. No. Yeah. I, I, I think for me the narrative and the characters must just be trumping for whatever reason right now the message. Like I love the message, and I'm still just like, yeah. get out of here, Seamus. So we both have problems with the story, but for opposite reasons. That is so interesting. That is really, really interesting. And yes. Rami and I are just sitting here looking very smug. Because there was drones! There was drones! <laughs> and bombs! Yeah. There weren't any guys in, in white vests, but that, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys. <laughs> now we know how to get six out of you. Just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're very excited about that. <laughs> Okay, so it's time to choose next week's story. I'm hosting the game, but first, what stories do you want to read next week? Uh, we'll start with Maya. I am putting in 10th of December by George Saunders. Mm, very good. We haven't had George. No, we haven't. Rami? Mine is The South by Jorge Luis Borges. Ooh, yes, I like him. I like him. We had fun that the last time we read him. Mm -hmm. It'll be and a good one. I am putting in again the Semplica Girl Diaries by George Saunders. And like last time I said it to the Two? Two yeah. George Saunders? Two George Saunders. But but listen, I'm just being lazy. I didn't want to pitch a new one. <laughs> it doesn't oh, take long to Google one. a short story free. Or persistent. <laughs> She's very persistent. I'm lazy. <laughs> I like you. Okay. So, who wants to be one, who wants to be two, and who wants to be three? Choose a number. You're a One a number. is the loneliest yeah. number that you'll ever be. Uh, Anise, choose a number. One, two, or three. I'm number one. Yeah? Okay. Uh, Rami, choose a number. Two or three? Three. Okay. Two. Okay. Because that's all that's left. It's not much of a choice. No, yeah, we're all in, it's, it's in alphabetical order, which is really boring, but never mind. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, I loved your little dance. I wish that could be an audio, because that was like, you're like in it. <laughs> we're like right. Sesame Street's children. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait until we're ready. <laughs> Was that an eye roll? <laughs> oh, yes. A very big one. <laughs> okay, let me just... Because I haven't printed this out, so I'll put this... Down. Right, okay then. So, Anais, um, what we are doing this week in the quiz is I want you to tell me the name of the film which is described by the crimes which occur in it. Wow. Oh, man! Okay. This is it won't be too bad, I don't I think. don't watch very many movies. I'm oh, going down. Oh, uh, I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> Start with Anais. The crimes are att stop sighing. <laughs> the crimes are attempt attempted taxidermy, reckless operation of a coupe de ville, and menacing Dalmatians. <laughs> yeah, see? That wasn't too difficult. That's okay. You always give her the easy ones. Okay. I, told, I gave you the choice of... Oh, <laughs> Look how flustered I get him. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Hit me. Um, okay, Maya. Uh, the crimes are menacing Tokyo, leaving the scene of destruction, inducing Japanese panic. Uh-oh. I'm thinking Tokyo Drift. That's the only movie I can think of with Tokyo in it. That and Audition, but that's a horror movie. So, yeah, I have no idea. Can we Oops. steal? No. No, because there's two, there's two of you. Sorry. Um, the, the, it, the answer is, of course, Rami? Godzilla. Godzilla. Oh, I've never seen it. I know. I'm a horrible human being. No, you're not. 
Um, uh, what human hasn't seen Godzilla? <laughs> okay. Okay. I actually haven't seen the original. I saw the remake. No. Okay. Um, so, Remy, um, electrocution, murder by laughter, dancing with the devil. <laughs> Uh, wait, this is a movie or like a villain? It's a movie. Electrocution, murder by left. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Batman? He's correct. Wow, what, wow. what's Dancing with the Devil? Uh, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't make the question. Oh. He's like, I haven't seen the movie either. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Well, we're, we're slacking here. Um, uh, Anise, identity, identity theft, tampering with evidence, misuse of a knife in a shower. <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> Psycho. I love that. Misuse of a knife. A Brit must have written this, because that's the only way you could like, downplay something that well. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. Yeah. Maya, try this one. Boat vandalism, scuba tank theft, devouring of a sea captain. I have no idea. Sorry, pass. Really? Yeah. It was, it was Jaws. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Remy. Um, Abduction, corrupting another with drugs, breaking ankles with a sledgehammer. <laughs> you can... Finally, one I know. Oh, really? Um, I've already swapped them around and try and give you an easy one. <laughs> I want to say taken? No. It what was it? misery. I've uh, never seen it. No? So good. So good. Very good. So good. Okay. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> oh dear. I'll oh do, no, um, he's getting giddy. This is bad. <laughs> and he's hold on tight. <laughs> and he's, um... <laughs> he can't even say the question without laughing. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> bad. Um, <laughs> right, <it's, laughs> It's, Come on, um, spit it out. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Um, murder, abuse of a corpse, drinking Chianti with fava beans. <laughs> abuse of a corpse. Silence of the lambs is correct. Abuse of a corpse. <laughs> That's almost as good as misuse of a knife in a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Here's 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 one. <laughs> Planet side. <laughs> what? I can not even hear you. <laughs> the, the crimes are Planet side, carrying a concealed lightsaber, and <laughs> <laughs> force choking. <laughs> carrying a concealed lightsaber. <laughs> Without a license, I assume. I would hope it's Star Wars, because if it's not, I'm going to feel really stupid. <laughs> it is Star Wars. <laughs> and I got See? one. <laughs> and, and I got so excited that uh, my hair got... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and Remy, the crimes are hobbit stalking, <clears throat> giant spider baiting, mandibular amputation. What was the first one? Hobbit stalking. Uh, Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. And that is it. I had some <laughs> tiebreakers, but we don't need them. Because an ace won. Woo! Yay! Finally Outside. paid off. We got some George Sanders. Yeah, Woo! Outside, I have to Jazz hands. For, for a new story. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're reading Semplica Girl Diaries by George Saunders. But before you do that, head over to literaryroadhouse.com and let us 
Let us know what you thought of Frisch's political story. Every time you don't leave a comment, a drone kills a kitten. So please <laughs> help others find our show by leaving a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spreaker, and by sharing our podcast with your friends. Until next time, read a good story. Good grief, Eddie. Your closes are yeah. awesome. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just Good love you. Yo, <laughs> poor poor kitten. Uh, <laughs> I really like this game. Really? <laughs> like, what if people get too sad about the dead kittens? But then I was like, with the tone, with the tone.